Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox again. We're doing part B of the Hadoop and MapReduce slides. And this part describes MapReduce, um, let's say, opposed to Hadoop. All right, let's go. So that just says it all in a single slide. No, well, we know what we're doing. So Hadoop consists of running a map. And the word map means run a filter, run a computing operation, do something. That thing is considered mapping as it reads some data, typically uses those data values to, to calculate something and then produces a result. So that's what the map does. Reads data, computes, produces results. Um, we use key value pairs, or rather Hadoop uses key value pairs. As in, Intellectually, MapReduce works just fine, whether it's key value pairs or hippopotami that you're dealing with. But uh, key value are a very important case. And we saw an example of that with uh, making fruit juice, where the key was the type of fruit and the value was the fruit or the slices themselves, or eventually the, the juice. Um, so we have, of course, lots of examples. Databases are full of properties which are the keys, name, age, score. And uh, you can get key values where a name of John and, uh, and the, where the key is name and the value is John and so on. Okay, age is 12 and school is, well, we don't have too many 12 year olds in ISC, but maybe we will. Um, so we have mappers, so mappers are just tasks or processes or threads which do something. And as I said, they take the data, which could be the collection of apples, and just slices them up. That's the mapping stage. And essentially, always this is all designed to do parallel computing, because without parallel computing, you can't process enough data. And you have your data is stored on lots of disks. So these parallel, uh, the mappers run in parallel, reading the disk in parallel, and then doing the computing in parallel. And the key, I, the key aspect, of course, is in parallel computing, you wish to avoid synchronization overheads. And uh, in the key I point of MapReduce is that in the map stage, you have one synchronization, which is the end of all maps. Then you have a reduce phase with one synchronization, end of all reduces. And so MapReduce is particularly simple because it has two synchronization points, each of which can be chosen to be done on disk for high reliability. They're not sort of stored in memory and so sensitive to all sorts of funny things. And that's a key aspect of this because in the tr more traditional parallel computing community, they would be looking at complicated jobs, exchanging information, and there will be thousands or tens of thousands of synchronization points, a much greater chance of, um, of being sensitive to faults, and much greater chance that the synchronization overhead was significant. All right, so as a typical map process, sorry, reduced process in ranges in like um, taking all the sum, adding up the number of apples or something like that, or collecting all the apples in one place. There is need for some standard uh, processing, which are called shuffles and sorts. And um, you do those first before you do the actual reduction. The sort and the shuffle are provided by Hadoop or MapReduce for you. And um, the reducer is um, custom, like when we were making the juice, you would sort all the apple uh, slices in one place and maybe sort some orange slices to make a better tasting juice. But then the blending, which was the final reduction phase, would be um, would be custom to the particular case of making juice. If I'm doing the uh, if I'm discovering the Higgs boson, then the reduction phase, the mapping phase, is looking at all the data taken at the CERN accelerator. Identifying events that could have been produced by Higgs bosons, uh, categorizing the properties of those events as uh, histogram entries. And then the reduction phase is taking all those histogram entries and adding them up to get a histogram where we will see a nice bump, 
where the Higgs boson is. Okay. Here is a picture. We have our three input value for the input stream, dog, cat, rat, car, car, rat, dog, car, cat. And then um, we can run in parallelism. We take each of those three and run them separately. Here we are, huge amount of parallelism. Then we map, which replaces uh, <coughs> dog by dog comma one, cat by cat comma one. To say there's one occurrence of cat in that particular document. And uh, we can either immediately do, uh, in this case here, car comma two, or we just keep them separate car comma ones. Then in the reduction phase, before the reduction phase, we do the shuffle, all the dogs are joined together, all the cars and so on. And then finally, the reduction counts the number of them um, dogs, cars, cats, and rats. And we have two each for a cat dog, rat, and three cars. That is more a reasonably a trivial case, but it illustrates the essence of map bridges. Um, with parallelism, partitioning, I think it's the same as partitioning, the mapping, the sorting and shuffling, the reducing, and then getting the final answer. Here is another example of the same basic idea. With, uh, instead of just lists of words, we actually have sentences. Quick brown fox, fox ate the mouse, how now brown cow. The mapper is doing exactly the same thing. And then it is shuffling in the middle here. The reduction is um, uh, doing the uh, joining together in the different categories. Brown, fox, how now, the in the top category. Eight cow, mouse, and quick in the bottom category. So it's a very sim <coughs> similar idea, differing in detail. The reduction operation needs to know which categories it's looking for. It says it's a shuffle. The shuffle is told where to send the particular keys. It's not the shuffle will not look at values; it will just look at keys. Uh, where the is a key, and brown is a key. Then, Word values are the keys in this case, and the value is the number. Um, so this is formally this uh, incredibly stupid uh, trivial function here. You look for every word and you split the text. You look for every word in the split text, and you output for each word the value of the word, which is the key, comma one. Then the reducer <coughs> sums up the counts of the words, and um, that's a, this is again a formalization of what we already illustrated in those two examples we showed before. All right, here's yet another example of uh, coming from Judy Chu, and we have the user program. We have some input data again. We just have uh, three data three data. Three um, things in our data set. We have three mappers uh, for the reduced phase. We just have two reduced phases, as we actually show in that last example. We have an overall master program controlling all of this. And uh, here we do the map. Uh, the mappers write, typically write everything to disk. With HDFS, it's usually as soon as a disk on every node. So the mapper will write the, the uh, results of the maps on the disks for that node. Then those uh, disks are joined together by the shuffle operation, which you see is here. The shuffle is all sorting, that's essentially the same thing. And then we do the reduction. And we get, in this case, because we have two reduced things, two output files as we saw in that uh, previous example. That's it. This is. A more formal uh, specification of what we illustrate in those examples. Here's some actual code, um, which uh, is uh, for Hadoop, and uh, it's a typical Java code with uh, you just have to look up the, the syntax. Notice here the reducer is the user, does the reducer. And here he is, he's calculating the sum. That's the specific feature of the reducer. 
And here we have the um, Pacific Mapper, which is outputting the words comma one for every uh, time that the tokenizer has found a new word. This is yet a, a more um, precise version of um, again what we saw there. Partitioned input file with different blocks. Each block was in this case read by a mapper. Actually, it's interesting there are different sizes here. In a, in a more sophisticated um, map produce, it is not clear that the amount of work is directly proportional to the size of the input data. If your data had lots of words, if you're only looking for some words and your some documents have more interesting words than others, you can have very different lengths. And in more realistic examples, you almost always have a, mi a difference between the length of the, the amount of data stored on disk and the amount of work needs to be done. Notice everything is local, because we, we tend to, we hope to store the data on the lo disk local to the nodes. All the maps are run in parallel. They all store the results in parallel or present presumably on the same disks that they uh, that you just um, uh, <coughs> you just use to store the data on. The sorting might well produce a new set of disks because your sorting will actually often produce fewer fewer results than the input. Remember, there's a previous example had three. Three partitions on the input stage, and only two partitions on the reduce phase. All right, so if we look at the implementations of MapReduce, uh, Hadoop was the most famous initial one. In terms of activity, Spark now easily outperforms uh, Hadoop. Because Spark implements uh, is sort of a Hadoop plus plus. It uh, it doesn't actually do anything that the Hadoop was really properly designed to do any better than Hadoop, because I don't think it's possible to do better than Hadoop. But it has lots of additional features, and is very well architected, and has particularly good fault tolerance issues using a technology we'll come on to in the Spark lectures called RDD. Redundant data sets. Uh, we have a little system of Bloomington called Twister, which actually preceded Spark. and was a, another improvement of Hadoop, uh, but we did not do anywhere near as good the job as Berkeley in, in productizing our work. And it has been, um, it is well read, it has uh, got 940 citations, but um, it is no longer an actively pursued project. We have resurrected it as a project called Twister 2, where we're trying to if you like, to a Spark plus plus. If Spark is a do plus plus, and Twister is roughly Spark, initial version of Spark, uh, then Twister 2 is meant to be a Spark plus plus.